Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave, a special episode. I'm talking to brand new hams, those whose license just showed up on the internet, who've printed it out, they're proud of it, they cut out the pocket one, pocket size one, and put it in their pocket, and they framed the big one and put it on their wall. Doggone it, you work for that. Be proud of it. Now, what we're going to talk about today is antennas for VHF work. These are antennas for your classic mobile radios, either used as a mobile radio or as a base station. I've got three different antennas to show you, a simple one you can use in the car. In fact, you don't even have to have a mobile radio to use this one. You can use your handheld. This is the so-called mag mount. There's a big magnet in here. And this is the antenna. And then you see this plate on the bottom, this uh, metal. This is connected to the shield and it capacitively couples to the car body. Now this sits on the top of your car, presuming it isn't plastic like my Jeep is, and will sit up there and be quite sturdy. You bring this around, bring it in through a door. I use the right rear door because that is the door that is least opened. Okay, and then you take this and, and it hooks to the back of your mobile radio. This thing will handle the, it, pretty much any amount of power you want to put through it. So you'll be operating 25 watts. 50 watts is a little much. Try 25 until you're sure there are repeaters you want to use that you can't hit uh, from this thing. We'll talk about repeaters in a separate video. This is a multi-band antenna. From the base to the top is 19 inches. This is a trap. And what happens is this short part is used for the 70 centimeter band, of which this is a quarter wave. So we've got a quarter wave for 70 centimeters. The whole thing is a quarter wave for two meters. And these work really well. The difference between using your handheld with its rubber duck antenna in the car and using this with this hooked to the output of either your handheld or your 25 watt radio is stupendous. It is incredibly different. This antenna will make all the difference in the world from using an ordinary handheld. Okay, now these will usually have a PL-235 on the end of them, but I want to show you that you can get adapters. Now, your radio, here's one right here for, this is male, for a radio that's female, and I've got another one over here, this is both the same. You can get these so they're either male or female. This attaches to your handheld, and then this part attaches to the PL259. You can get these. This goes into a female, and you've got the SO239 right there. The problem with this is that it does put a lot of pressure on the circuit board doing it that way. These adapters are, I won't say freely available, they're pay available on Amazon. You can get whatever you need there, and that's where most of those came. So I can take, for example, a radio that has the classic SMA connector on it, the little one, and connect it to the PL259 that goes up to the antenna on the roof of the car. Now you can, when you're indoors, if you want, like put this on top of the refrigerator, put it on top of filing cabinet, but why when you can put up an outside antenna? Here is the classic outside antenna. Now this is known as a J-pole because it kind of looks like a J from there up to the top. This piece right here is irrelevant. It's the mounting piece. You can hose clamp this to a mast or you can, what I like to do sometimes, just put it down one of the vents and it'll stop right here. This is the active part of the antenna. From the top down to there is a half wave at two meters. A half wave, it's end fed. This is a quarter wave stub and it's shorted at the bottom. So this is the point of lowest voltage 
This is the point of highest voltage, and we like to feed our NFED antennas with the high voltage. So the fact that this doesn't connect to anything, well, it virtually connects over here. You've got this stub which doesn't transmit. Now, if this is high voltage and this is zero voltage, you want to attach your cable where it is 50 ohms. So this is zero ohms, very high ohms, 50 ohms right here. You can get the dimensions off of these uh, from the internet. You can build it yourself out of plastic pipe or twin lead or ladder line or whatever you want. I've seen them uh, built out of many, many different things, and they all work, and they work quite well. So this puts a full-size vertical dipole on your roof outside where it's not interfered with by the wiring and stuff inside the house. It does a fantastic job, and they're cheap. You can purchase them ready-made in a variety of formats. Here is a portable J-Pole. I constructed this out of a kit. Okay, here's the SO239 that goes to the radio. Okay, and then that unfolds and comes up to the actual antenna, which starts right here. See, we've got this window line here that's actually 300 ohms. Okay, so we've got, here's the half wavelength part right here. Now there's a hunk in here that will allow it to work on 440 also. This J-pole is two meters only. This is a dual band J-pole. So you just take this little loop of string I put on it, hook this over a, a tree limb, okay? And you can sit down at your portable station in a nice, comfortable lawn chair and operate having a, what is, it doesn't look like it, but this is a full-size antenna. Okay, a full-size antenna. So that's another way to do it. And you can make these things for dirt cheap. I made one for my, it was a little uh, Polaris razor that did a very nice job just to have it with me if I needed to stop and use it. I also made one, you know, a lot of people with their ATVs, they put a pole with a flag. That pole is fiberglass. It's long enough you can actually tape a J-pole to it and use that fiberglass. It doesn't affect the radiation. The flag doesn't either. And you can mount one of your mobile units in Razor or on a, a quad or anything like that and you've got communications between you and the others just fine no problem now what if one of these vertical antennas isn't enough i ran into that situation many years ago when i wanted to communicate with somebody who was across town this is a beam okay here's the driven element right here the reflector and two directors, so it's four element beam. This uses what's called a gamma match. Right here, this is not a homebrew product. This comes from an American vendor. These are solid aluminum pieces here. This thing is all set up to attach to a mast. There's just, this is a serious antenna. Now one of the problems with the J-pole is if you point this at a repeater far away that you want to get to, is that you can't rotate it unless you have a rotator. So it's stuck in one direction. Now, in my case, that was fine because I was talking to a place on the other side of the city of Denver, and it turned out that the beam made a difference. Now, the beam not only increases the power output, it acts like a flashlight. It pushes the beam that way but it also increases the ability of your receiver. So these are some of your options that you've got for antennas for your handheld. I would not try using your handheld with this little short rubber duck in your car. You're only going to be able to hit the very nearest repeaters and nothing else. You're going to have to at least put this up. Now, this is not expensive. These are 25 or $30.
complete with everything. Go to DX Engineering, see what you can find, or call them to have them help you. This one is made by Aero Antennas. It's $120 right now. You can order direct from them or get it through your favorite retailer. I tend to favor DX Engineering these days, but the others are just fine. This actually was made as a fundraiser by the junior division of the Boulder Amateur Radio Club. The kids made these and sold them to raise money. I think I paid $25 for it. Okay, so you've got lots of options for antennas. So the takeaway from this is don't stop at the rubber duck. The rubber ducks belong in the bathtub, not out in real use, okay? So you've got lots of options to greatly increase your range. So next time we'll talk a little bit about repeaters and where you can find them. Until then, I wish you all the best in your hamming. I hope you're really enjoying it. Until we next meet, 73.